All right, so I know my motor package right there is uh, uh, good enough for now, and I can move that wherever I want. But I want to start getting the other pieces of the bike where they're going to go need to go. So I decided to jump on the back wheel, and the back wheel uh, is going to be, again, another belt drive with a hub on it, and uh, another rim will be the actual uh, pulley. So I'm trying to figure out how to get that attached to aluminum rim. Usually on steel, I can just kind of weld them together. It's not an issue, but we're dealing with aluminum and steel. Um, I first thought of uh, drilling through and riveting them, and then you can kind of you know grind off the outside of the rivet, and the belt just wants to sit in the center anyway. Um, but I would like to actually be able to space it eh, about that far apart, just because the tire has a little bit of a you know, yeah, it sticks out a little bit past the rim itself, so that's what I'm working on trying to come up with something. So, uh, let's see what I come up with. All right, change of plans. I'm gonna go with this little tiny wheel because it's got a fatter hub to it and it's actually the same style as the one below it. So, I'm gonna think of that. I'm gonna go like that, and you got about a two inch gap, probably about the same as what's on the back of that bike. So, I stripped the tire off of this, but I just want to show you something from the factory. See how those spokes kind of stick out? Look at this one. How's that? Think that pop your tire? Uh, a little Chinese factory. That's how that was made. So what I was going to do to mount the um, the one rim to the other rim on the bike we're working on was um, try to come up with some kind of different spacer. You know, this one has a trim ring on it, and I kind of like to use something unique. And when I make that stuff, um, and what I thought of doing, which would have been a good idea, is uh, taking the sprocket and uh, cutting it into sections and have that scab across it. Unfortunately, um, the spare sprocket that was on this bike went on the one you just saw, so I only have the one. But it would have been cool if I could have sliced it like that, like that, and take that piece of the pie and put them evenly around the rim and. Uh, drilled and attached it. So I didn't have that, so I want to come up with some other idea. And I ended up looking at, I had some uh, silverware. There's a pile over there, but they were all miscellaneous stuff, nothing matched. So I went to my local restaurant supply, and they sell a box of 12 for $3.95. So that's what we have here. We have um, eight butter knives, uh, riveted, drilled and riveted to the rim. So that kind of makes that uh, outer circle. I just got to probably just grind down a little bit on those rivets because the tire is going to rub up against that side. And then I have to do it again with this rim. Uh, once I get it centered, I have to drill it and rivet those in there. And then that will be my drive hub. I also need to get some um, kind of like a big chrome washer to go over the center of this. And I'm going to weld all these together in the center too to give it um, just to key them all together. And I will also. Um, this is steel, so I'll tack it to each one of these so that uh, this becomes one uh, one unit. All right, keep going. So, I'm trying to find the center of that, and this is the high tech centering device, which is my light. And I'm just gonna watch that gap and uh, spin it around till that uh, that gap stays the same. All right, this is what I'm going with. I've been spinning it around for about five minutes until I got. <laughs> that is my um, my gap. It, you see that little one little divot in it? It's right where the seam of the rim is right there. Okay, so it's just the rim itself. So I'm going with that. I'm going to clamp it down and then start drilling those guys and uh, riveting them on. All right, so there's the rim uh, finished up. Got all the uh, spokes riveted into place. The butter knives, and that's nice and straight. And if I could stay still, I can show you how steady it is. Uh, that should be able to hold the belt pretty good. So now I need to get this over there. So I got to try to figure out how to cut the fork, have the fork come out around the wheel and back over again, um, and also make sure it clears the belt when it does it at the same time. So uh, that's what I'm gonna work on next. So, I'm making a little elbow room. I'm gonna cut this section of the frame off and then kinda go from there.
That one doesn't give you much room. Yeah, so you put that back on there. That's more where its location is going to be. And a little hand off here. So now I got to try to figure out how to come from here, out and around, and connect back up here somewhere. What well, that'll be the look right there. Cut that up now. I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut this piece free, stick it on the center of the wheel, and then I could figure out how to attach the two points. All right, so I decided to uh, make like a uh, uh, a jack shaft setup, and I'm going to let it float for a little bit, and um, just kind of make the assembly, and then kind of figure out where I want to go put it, and then I'll make I'll branch out to it and figure out how I want to weld it to the frame. But I have uh, this is a uh, quarter inch thick. It's like um, trailer hitch. Uh, stock so that's like a three inch piece in the middle there and I capped it with uh, a couple of self-centering bearings and what I figure also is um, when this is in there however I, this gets welded in however I want to go to adjust I can loosen these bolts up and I could slide both of these assemblies around however I want so my tracking is not quite right I'll have a bunch of built-in adjustment to it so so now I'm just kind of looking at like pulleys. This is too small. I need something probably like four. And what we're doing is we're coming from the back motor. And I want to come up probably right about, you know, right about there, something like that. But uh, with uh, about double the size of that pulley. And um, I'm probably going to have the idler come up on this guy. Have this one be the one that the other comes up on and uh, for drive and disengage so the motors can run free and uh, all the other ones will be constant. So, uh, this is a piece of shaft. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like it's an axle out of something. So, I just hacked off uh, about 8 inch section and uh, I figure if I need more, you know, I'll screw this. If I screw this one up, I, I just keep going from that one. But it's hardened, it should be fine. I got um the motors aren't in the center right now anyway the motors are sucked too far over because of the way the clamp is but I figured the distance is the same I have to get from that pulley to that pulley across to here to a pulley that would line up in the center of this going forward so that guy can go like something like that and I gotta try to figure out what I want to get for a fat setup on the front I might just do like, um, I think this is a uh, upper snowblower setup. I might go look and see for something like that. Or uh, worst case, I'll just make my own uh, piece. Probably make it out of aluminum. But I'll keep looking. And I say I gotta make something uh, probably, I don't know, tape measure-ish kind of size. About that size. Because you want uh, about that about that diameter. How about that right there? There you go. <laughs> I'll make it out of that. I'll throw bearings in it. Um, you want it so that the belt, it's gonna be a flat belt, has a bunch of contact area. If you go too small, um, it has a tendency to you'll be able to slip right out of it. Plus, this is kind of uh, I think how the gear ratio is gonna go. Go. Here, sneeze. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Um, the other bike, this one, this is pretty much the ratio that worked out on that two-stroke motor. And uh, it is that pulley, that size right there. Um, I'm going to say that is one and a half inch ID, I'd say. And I would say that rim is 16. I think it's a... They call us, it, it's, it measures like 12, I think, across. I don't know.
in a second. But it's the same as this one. So I basically just have to, uh, if I want to split the diameter of that front pulley, I can 12, yeah. And I figure um, whatever I'm off, like this side will be fixed, unless I absolutely have to change it. But the other side is just pulleys, you know, you just go to a tractor supply and you go get whatever you want for those and you can kind of change them to get the speed that you need. In other words, I'm winging it. All right, guys, I'm going to shut you down. I'm uh, going to look for uh, something for that and uh, continue on.